Hey guys, welcome back to the channel. This video will be a new story called Naruto the Elemental Fox. All credit goes to the author, Kitsune Dragon, for their amazing story. Make sure to read the whole story by clicking the link tree link in the description, then clicking on the name of this story. This part will be chapter 1 to 7 of the story. Also don't forget to smash the like button and subscribe. Now let's get into this amazing story. A loud, menacing howl echoed throughout the night as the Kyubi no Kitsune attacked the peaceful village of Kanahaga Kor, also known as Kanoha. Each ninja sent to battle the Kyubi was considered a master. Shuriken and Kanai flew through the air, piercing the large Kitsune's belly, but had no effect. The fox forced the weapons out using Yukai and then healed itself. The fox roared again. Storm clouds appeared out of nowhere, and the fox then started using its claws and teeth to tear apart any shinobi that dared to attack it, shredding them to pieces. Then, the fox unleashed its most fearsome weapon, its large, nine whip-like tails, and began destroying buildings, claiming lives and infrastructure. Foolish humans, you stand no chance against me, but because of your courage to try and stop me from destroying your pathetic village, you all have my respect. Before you die, Wahahaha. After the fox's little speech, it resumed its destruction, a large vulpine grin on its face as everything in its path was obliterated. Katan, Gukaku no Jutsu, a group of ninja yelled. Large fireballs blasted out of their mouths and hit the large fox in its face, hoping to hurt it if not kill it with that blow. The smoke cleared, revealing to the ninjas surprise that there wasn't even a scratch on the beast's face. The shinobi gasped in fear and horror. Nothing seemed able to stop the QB. That tickled, the fox said with a large grin. Its large red eyes stared down the shinobi, metaphorically turning those who looked into them to stone. The QB's ears perked up and then started to growl as it noticed its new enemy. A giant toad wearing what looked like a bathrobe and carrying a massive dagger with a man on its head. This was no ordinary man. This was the famous blonde-haired Yandame Hokage, nicknamed the Yellow Flash, Namikaze Minato. QB, Yubaka. Why are you attacking Kanoha? bellowed the toad to Kyubi. The fox snorted at the toad. Gamabunta, you always were a fool. Now, step aside before I have to crush you with this pathetic village, roared the Kyubi. Never, Bunta said with an icy tone and a huge amount of killing intent towards the fox. The toad and fox then began to battle, while Minato performed some hand signs that would end up being the last ones he would ever make. Bunta, I'm going to start the ceiling, yelled Minato to his summon. All right, Bunta replied, backing away as Minato performed the final seals. Snake, boar, ram, rabbit, dog, rat, bird, horse, snake. Fuin Jutsu, Shiki Fuyuin, the young blonde Hokage yelled. The QB stared at the man, and then a ghostly image appeared behind Minato. The Death God, it's not possible. How could a mere human summon such a thing? The Death God's arm then reached through Minato's stomach and headed towards the QB. Kyuso, I don't want to die. Kyuso, move. Move. But the Kyuubi's legs refused to move as the Death God's arm drew closer and closer. Finally, the arm reached into the Kyuubi's body, ripped out its soul, and sealed it into the bundle in Minato's arms in a bright flash of light. The Kyuubi screamed its last as the remainder of its soul was torn out and sealed, and then its body disappeared, never to be seen again. The ninja yelled out in victory. Their Hokage had done what no one else could. But then the body of the Hokage started to fall off Gamabunta's head. People ran to catch him as his body plummeted towards the ground, the small bundle still in his arms. However, Bunta caught him and gently rested him on the ground. The shinobi started to cry as they saw the dead body of their once great leader. Then, Saratobi Haruzen, the Sandame Hokage, along with Jiraiya, Saratobi's student and Minato's teacher, arrived at the scene, each with a grim look on their face. Saratobi immediately took the bundle from the Yandame's cold, dead arms. He removed the cloth to reveal a young baby with blonde hair and three marks on his cheeks that looked like whiskers, with blue eyes, and a large seal on its stomach that glowed as it was being burned into the boy's skin. The glowing stopped, and the baby stopped crying. That's a seal designed to seal the Kyubi's soul into the boy's body and also give the Kyubi's chakra to the boy to add to his own growing chakra coils, said Jiraiya, an expert on seals who had even created some of his own. When the ninja present heard this, they thought the demon was the boy and immediately shouted to kill the demon and whatnot. Some even threw Kanai to kill the baby, but Jiraiya blocked them all. What the hell is wrong with you all? Can't you see this boy here is a hero? Why can't you see that? 
Jiraiya yelled at them. Because, Jiraiya-sama, that thing is not a boy. It's a didash. But the man never got to finish his statement as Jiraiya shoved a Rasengan into the man's chest, sending him flying. Anyone else want to say something about my godson? Such fools. They don't even know the difference between a demon and a young boy burdened with something no one should have to deal with, thought Sarutobi. No one answered, but some had shocked expressions on their faces at the news of Jiraiya being the boy's godfather. Some of the shinobi present then truthfully went over to Jiraiya's side as an act of believing that the boy was a hero, not a monster. After the little episode, all the people who sided with Jiraiya, then Shunshin no gestured back to the village to present the news. Kanoha, the next day. The next day, Saratobi called together the entire village for an announcement. The whole village gathered outside the Hokage Tower. There, on the balcony, stood the Sandame, watching the crowd. Everyone stopped talking, sensing the importance of the gathering. My treasured villagers, Saratobi began, due to the death of our beloved Yandame Hokage, I will be reinstated into the position of Hokage again. The people were saddened by the death of their leader, but cheered at the news that someone they could trust would lead them once more. Also, as you all know, the QB was defeated, but it was not completely destroyed. The villagers grew restless upon hearing this and began to murmur among themselves. Don't fret, my people, Saratobi continued, for the Yandame has sealed the spirit of the QB into a young baby, Uzumaki Naruto. Naruto is to be seen as a hero, and any child his age is not to know of the QB being sealed within him or attempt to harm Naruto, else you will face execution as punishment. Hokage sama, why are you telling us not to kill the demon brat? said one villager, prompting others to question their Hokage. Saratobi sighed inwardly. These people are such bakas, just like those other ninja. They only see the demon, not a young boy, and obviously, most of them are. Well, that is all, said the Sandame Hokage, and with that, he left to attend to what would likely be tons of paperwork. This is the beginning of the tale of Uzumaki Naruto, the elemental fox. Twelve years later, it was a beautiful day in the village of Kanahagakur. The birds were singing, the sun was shining brightly in the sky, and villagers were going about their daily routines. The Sandame Hokage watched his beloved village from the Hokage Tower with a small smile on his face. It really was a peaceful, relaxing d Naruto. Okay, maybe not so peaceful and relaxing. With that, the Hokage looked at the Hokage faces to discover them covered with graffiti. The Hokage faces were stone monuments meant to honor all the Hokage for the people of Kanoha to remember there was someone looking out for them. Now, said faces were all colored with red swirls and what looked like blood, obviously red paint, coming from their nostrils. The Hokage sighed and then went to combat the most hated enemy of every Kagya. Paperwork. I wish I knew how to get this stuff done quicker because this is bullcrap. Down in the streets of Kanoha, a young 12-year-old boy wearing an orange jumpsuit and blue ninja sandals was running through the streets. He had spiky blonde hair, electric blue eyes, three whisker-like marks on each cheek, wore goggles on his forehead, and even some unboo black ops were following him. This was Uzumaki Naruto, Jinchuriki of the Kyubi no Yoko. Ha ha ha, you'll never catch me, you dickless homos, yelled our blonde protagonist. Get back here, you little gaki, so you can face your punishment, yelled a few of the shinobi. Never. Naruto cried out in defiance. You guys just don't have the balls to do what I just did, he added with a foxy grin on his face. It was true what he said, though. Everyone had too much respect towards the Hokage to do such an act. Jumping past a fence, Naruto sped away with the Chunin and Jonin still hot on his trail. The Unbo, the greatest ninja assassins in all of Kanoha, could not put up with any more humiliation of not being able to catch a 12 year old boy and left. A few seconds later, the fence started to laugh. Naruto dropped his disguise, which was a sheet colored in the same shade and had the same characteristics as the fence. This was a very often used disguise by Naruto as a means of escape after his pranks. He he, those guys just can't catch me, Databeo, he said with a large fox-like grin on his face. Naruto then turned to go when his face suddenly smacked into something. Itai, Naruto looked up with a pained expression on his face from coming in contact with a chunin vest that belonged to his ninja academy teacher, Yumino Iruka. The scarred-faced ninja looked down at Naruto with a glare that could kill someone. He he he, Haya Iruka-sensei, he said with a sheepish smile. How are you today? How does he always manage to find me? Naruto thought. Naruto, you're supposed to be in class. Iruka yelled. Then his voice calmed as though nothing had happened. Now come with me, you little gaki and Iruka dragged the blonde, 
who had a scowl on his face, back to the academy. Naruto, what am I going to do with you? The young Chunin thought with a confused expression on his face. Back at the academy, Naruto was tied to a chair in front of the whole class, which was laughing at his predicament. Naruto looked down at the ground with a scowl on his face. I'll show them, Naruto thought to himself. I'll show them all. Once I become a genin, I'll remove this stupid mask of happiness and show my true self. Then all of them will give me the respect I deserve, especially Sakura. Outside of Naruto's thoughts, the class had stopped laughing and looked at Naruto, who seemed to be in deep thought, which was a surprise to the whole class, as the blonde was always chatting about becoming Hokage, ramen, and acting like an idiot. Hey, Dobe, are you alive? Uchiha Sasuke called to the blonde enigma. Sasuke was the top rookie of the academy and a big emo freak whose hair looked like a chicken's ass painted black. The blonde still didn't respond, and Iruka started to grow worried, for Naruto had never been so quiet for this long. After a few minutes, Naruto looked up and saw everyone staring at him. He blinked. What? Why is everybody looking at me like that? He questioned. Iruka sighed in relief, glad to have the blonde loudmouth back in the real world. Now, seeing how Naruto has returned to the land of the living, he started. Naruto scowled at that remark. You all shall now perform the hinge no jutsu and transform into me because of Naruto's inability to come to class on time. The whole class groaned and shot a series of rude remarks and curses towards our blonde hero. The students lined up, and each one performed a perfect transformation into their teacher. Haruno Sakura, called Iruka. Sakura, one of Sasuke's fangirls, had long pink hair, emerald green eyes, and wore a red dress with blue ninja sandals. With a poof of smoke, she performed her transformation. Iruka nodded in approval, and Sakura squealed with excitement. She turned to face Sasuke, who had already had his turn. Sasuke Kuen, did you see that? Were you impressed? She asked, shouting to herself. Sasuke didn't respond. Uzumaki Naruto. Time to prank that stupid teacher. He doesn't understand what I've been going through. And for that, I'll make him suffer. Ha ha ha. Perform your hinge, Naruto, said Iruka. Sure, sensei. Poof. Out of the cloud of smoke stood a totally nude blonde and attractive young woman with pigtails, and smoke covered her private areas. Hey, Iruka sensei, I call this my Orioke no jutsu, said the blonde beauty. Iruka was then blown back really, really far due to a rather large nosebleed. Naruto, cut the stupid tricks. Iruka yelled while using humongous scary head no jutsu. All right, I'll do a normal hinge, responded Naruto. Naruto then transformed into a perfect copy of Iruka Sensei, reverted back to normal, and walked away with a large grin on his face, unaware of the pale eyes of a young lovestruck Hyuga Hinata watching his back. Ninja Academy, tomorrow. Good morning, class. Iruka greeted his students. Good morning, Iruka Sensei. All the students replied. As you all know, today is the day you all have your genin exams, so please be prepared, advised Iruka. This exam comes in three parts. The first part is a written exam, then you have a weapons test, and finally, we test you on the Bunshin no Jutsu. Is everyone clear? Yes, sensei, replied the academy students. Right, the exams will begin. Now. Kyuso, thought Naruto, even though my dumbness is a mask, my ability to pass one stupid paper isn't, and I can't even do a Bunshin to save my life. No, I mustn't give up, Databeo. Iruka tallied up the marks and announced that everyone passed, including Naruto albeit barely, who showed his signature foxy grin while everyone stared at him in disbelief. Next was the weapons test. Naruto decided to let down his mask for this part of the exam. He had to throw Tinkanai and try to hit a bullseye. Of course, Naruto decided to show off by getting bullseyes on a few targets without looking and even threw multiple kanai at a few more of the targets, achieving a perfect score. Kyuso thought the silver-haired academy teacher, Mizuki. At this rate, the Gaki will pass the exam but he'll fail the Bunshin part, and Iruka will fail him. Hee <laughs> hee. All right, class, time for the ninjutsu test, Iruka announced. Student after student passed, and walked off with their Hitai 8. Then it was Naruto's turn. Uzumaki Naruto, you're up, called Iruka. All right, Naruto, perform three Bunshins, and you will pass, but don't, and you fail. Naruto nodded, accepting the circumstances. Then Naruto gathered some chakra for the jutsu, and in a large poof of smoke, the jutsu was activated. When the smoke cleared, one pale-looking Naruto Bunshin appeared, looking like it had just gone through torture and had diarrhea. Iruka twitched at the poor attempt at making the Bunshin. Then he breathed deeply and calmly said, I'm sorry, Naruto. I know you tried your best, 
but you fail. Naruto looked down at the ground with a grim look on his face. Oh, come on, Iruka. Naruto did try his best. Just let him pass, said Mizuki-sensei. Naruto looked back up with hopeful eyes, but then drooped back into depression after being rejected for a second chance, or rather, the fourth chance, since he had failed the exam three times. Naruto then left the academy and sat on the swing where he had always sat since he was five. He stared at all the students, each wearing a Hitai 8 on their foreheads, arms, etc., and chatting with their parents, something he didn't have. This pushed Naruto's depression even further. Unable to stand watching it anymore, he ninja jumped back to his apartment with an unexpected visitor following him, a visitor with a large sadistic grin. Naruto's apartment roof. Naruto sat on the roof of his apartment, staring at the setting sun in the distance with a sad expression on his face. Then, a friendly tap on the shoulder freed him from his daydreaming. He turned around in surprise and saw Mizuki-sensei. What are you doing here? Naruto stuttered. Naruto thought to himself, Ha! Huh, this team believes he can trick the great prankster Uzumaki Naruto. He is gravely mistaken. Mizuki smiled a friendly smile at Naruto. Don't be so hard on Iruka. It's just how he is, Mizuki told Naruto. Ever since he lost his parents, his life has been, well, hard to understand. Naruto looked at Mizuki with a confused expression on his face. But I can tell you a secret way to become a genin and pass your exam, Mizuki continued. Naruto looked at Mizuki with a big grin, unaware of the true intentions behind Mizuki's words. Mizuki smiled a big grin also, but for a different reason. I have his complete and undivided attention now. Ha 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 ha. Yumino Iruka was lying down on his bed, thinking about what the Hokage told him about Naruto after the graduation exams. Flashback. Iruka entered the Sandame Hokage's office with a nervous attitude. The Hokage had called him in to discuss the academy students, but the messenger had said it was an emergency. Ah, Iruka, good to see you. I trust you are well, Saratobi greeted the young Chunin. Yes, I am, Hokage-sama. So, what was the emergency you wanted to see me about? Asked the curious academy teacher. I heard Naruto didn't pass his exams this year, the Hokage said with a far-off look in his eyes. Well, of course he didn't, Hokage-sama. It's just that he's always fooling around instead of studying, Iruka said. Ha ha ha, well, I remember when a young, scarred-nosed academy student used to do the same thing, the Hokage said in Naruto's defense. Iruka laughed lightly, knowing that Saratobi was talking about him. Iruka, you know Naruto is a lot like you. He's an orphan, and he never gives up. But, Iruka, do you know why Naruto acts like the class clown? Saratobi asked, staring hard at Iruka. Iruka shook his head, indicating that he didn't know. It's because he seeks attention and wants people to acknowledge his existence and see him for who he is, instead of the burden he was given, the Hokage explained. Iruka dropped his head in shame at not realizing his mistake sooner. You may leave now, Iruka. Oh, and Iruka, please try to help Naruto when he's struggling. All he needs is a loving hand to guide him, and he will become an excellent shinobi, Saratobi said with a grandfatherly smile. Iruka nodded and smiled as well, then left with a respectful bow. In flashback. Then, Iruka heard frantic knocking on his door. He got off his bed and walked to the door, opening it to see a panicking Mizuki. Mizuki, what are you doing here? What's wrong? Iruka asked, growing a bit frantic himself. It's Naruto, Iruka. He snapped and stolen the forbidden scroll. Hokage-sama wants us to meet him immediately, Mizuki yelled. What? Hold on, I'll go get dressed, Iruka said, rushing to his room to put on his chunin vest, sandals, and hitai eight. Then, he rushed to the Hokage Tower, where other chunin and some jonin were waiting, discussing what would happen to the scroll in Naruto's hands. Settle down, everyone, called the Hokage to his trusted ninja. As you all know, Naruto has stolen the forbidden scroll, and we need to find him quickly. The QB within Naruto could take over his body and use one of the jutsu in that scroll to break free, so I want you all to bring back the scroll in Naruto. Alive, the Saratobi said with the last word dripping with killing intent towards those who were thinking of harming Naruto. Now, Ike, the Hokage said in a commanding voice. Hi, the ninja said, then blurred away. Meanwhile, in a nearby forest, Naruto was sitting down in the forest, looking over the scroll with a serious look on his face. Okay, so the first jutsu here is Keijbunshin no Jutsu. This jutsu is very useful. The user creates perfect solid copies of him slash herself, and when dispelled, the user gains information or techniques the clone has learned, Naruto read to himself. 
Naruto then smiled his famous foxy grin. He could have endless sparring partners, pranking buddies, and he could learn jutsus in less time. Okay, I'll start learning this jutsu, and then, once I master it, I'll learn the other jutsu I find useful to add to my jutsu repertoire. Naruto said, determined, and began practicing his soon-to-be signature technique. Back with Iruka. Iruka was jumping on the roofs of Kanoha as he looked for the blonde and Shuriki. All the while, a little somebody was following the chunin in silence. Where are you, Naruto? Iruka asked slash yelled to himself, then sped off and headed towards the forest when he felt a large chakra signature coming from it. I better hurry, Iruka mentally told himself and hurried towards the forest. Back with Naruto, two hours later. Ah, uh, yes, even though it's been two hours, I've done it. I've learned at least six jutsu from the scroll, and they all seemed pretty cool and powerful, Naruto sighed, then took a break. Iruka then saw a little orange speck below when he was jumping through the branches of the forest. That must be Naruto. No one else in the leaf village wears orange besides Naruto, Iruka thought to himself. He dropped down below, and there sat Naruto with a smile on his face when he saw Iruka. Hey, Iruka-sensei, there you are. I was gonna look for you after I rested up, but now that you're here, you're gonna pass me for sure with these jutsus I learned for extra credit, Naruto said excitedly. Iruka looked at Naruto with a confused expression. What do you mean, Naruto? Iruka asked, not understanding. Mizuki-sensei told me if I learned some jutsu from this scroll, Naruto said, patting the scroll as though it were a cute little puppy. I'd pass with flying colors, Naruto said. Ha, huh? Naruto thought. I know Mizuki is just tricking me into giving him the scroll so he could get power. Then, a whooshing sound was heard, and a multiple number of shuriken and kanai came out from the brush and headed towards Naruto. Naruto was ready to dodge, but saw that he was too late to avoid them. He shut his eyes tightly and prepared for the pain, but was then roughly shoved aside by Iruka, who was hit by the flying pointy things of death. Luckily, the Chunin vest protected him as the weapons didn't pierce his skin, but some weapons caught the edge of his sleeves and pinned him to a tree, and a stray kanai had stuck him in the leg, causing blood to flow profusely from the wound. Then, on a branch stood Mizuki, but with the grin of a madman on his face instead of his usual kind smile. Mizuki, how could you betray the leaf village and why? Iruka yelled his question at the now former academy teacher and now traitor. Very carefully, Iruka. As for why, it was all for the quest for power. With that scroll, Mizuki yelled, pointing at the scroll which was now attached to Naruto's back. I will learn very powerful techniques and gain enough power to kill everyone in Kanoha, Mizuki said, followed by a maniacal laugh. Naruto stood there looking between his two senseis as they quarreled with each other. Mizuki's gaze then shifted towards Naruto. Give me the scroll, you little gaki. Mizuki demanded Naruto. No, Naruto, don't give him the scroll. Iruka yelled. He's going to use the scroll to learn techniques to destroy the village. Naruto, since you're about to die, I'll tell you a little secret kept by the Hokage, Mizuki said. No, Mizuki, stop. Iruka yelled. What secret? Naruto asked, curious as to what this secret was. Well, you see. Naruto, the Yandame Hokage didn't really kill the Kyubi no Kitsune 13 years ago. He had to seal its soul into a little baby boy. And do you know who that boy is, Naruto? Mizuki asked in a voice so sweet it could make you sick. Naruto shook his head, even though he knew about Kyubi already. He just wanted to play along a little bit longer, just so you know. I'm putting a flashback of how Naruto met Kyubi since he already knows about it. And stared at Mizuki wide-eyed, wanting to know who the boy was. Well, Naruto, that boy is... Mizuki started with a sadistic grin. You know, Mizuki, don't do this, yelled Iruka in a pleading voice. That boy is you, Naruto, yelled Mizuki. Naruto chuckled, and then his chuckling got louder and louder until it became full-blown laughter. What's so funny, Gaki? The trader asked in an annoyed tone. Well, Mizuki-sensei, it's just that I already know. I met the Kyubi in my mindscape when I was five years old. He saved me from a mob by blowing them all away with chakra. Naruto answered. Mizuki gasped. His plan was in ruins now. Naruto then stopped laughing and glared at Mizuki with all the killer intent he could muster, which is a lot, FYI. Mizuki froze on his tree branch as he couldn't move from the amount of killer intent being directed at him. Prepare to be put into a world of hurt, Sensei. Since you hurt Iruka Sensei, you will die here and now, Naruto said angrily. Kajibunshin no Hutsu. Naruto yelled. Then, Nine clones appeared in a puff, and five of them rushed Mizuki, knocking him off the tree branch and effectively pinning him to the ground. 
Mizuki tried to free himself but couldn't budge. The other four clones and the original Naruto then began to perform hand signs, and judging by the amount of chakra being molded, you could tell it was going to be a big finish. One clone then ended its hand signs on Tiger Seal, another on Bird, one on Snake, one on Dragon, and the original on Rat. Then, the clones yelled out the names of their jutsus. Kariwendan no Jutsu. Suiryudan no Justu. Doriwendan no Jutsu. Rairyudan no Jutsu. Furiwendan no Jutsu. The clones and the original Naruto then took a deep breath and the dragons of the element they called upon. Dragons of fire, water, earth, lightning, and wind then flew out of each clone's mouth respectively and flew towards Mizuki with great speed and power in their glowing yellow eyes. The dragons roared before consuming the traitorous Chunin in a mixture of the elements, and the clones pinning down Mizuki vanished in a puff of smoke when the attacks hit. A huge smoke cloud was formed, and when it cleared, Mizuki was a pile of ash formed by the Karawindan. Iruka smiled at Naruto as he began pulling out the kanai, and Shuriken lodged in his clothing and the one in his leg. Naruto was panting from using so much chakra. Naruto, come here and close your eyes. I have something to give you, Iruka called to Naruto. Naruto ran over to his teacher and closed his eyes. He felt his goggles being pulled off, and then something cottony slash silky was placed where his goggles were. Naruto smiled knowing what it was that was placed on his forehead. Okay, open your eyes now, Iruka said excitedly. Naruto opened his eyes and blinked a few times to get used to the sunlight. He looked at a smiling Iruka, who had no Hitai 8 on his forehead. Naruto grinned his famous foxy grin and then jumped at Iruka. Congrats, Naruto, you graduated, and tonight we'll celebrate with some ramen, Iruka said, smiling. Domo arigato, Iruka-sensei, Naruto said happily. Then he and Iruka walked off to go home. Meanwhile, in the Hokage Tower, Saratobi was watching the whole thing and was very surprised when he heard Naruto had made contact with the fox. He knew he had to talk to Naruto about it later, but for now, he was going to smoke his pipe and try to finish the paperwork. Uzumaki Naruto was walking into his classroom with a large smile on his face because due to the events yesterday, Naruto had passed and graduated and became a genin, or so he thought. Naruto entered the classroom and saw everyone staring at him with confused looks on their faces. Hey, Dobe, only students who graduated are supposed to come today, said one random student. Hey, you, Baka, look at this, Naruto said, pointing at the Hitai 8 on his forehead. This is proof of my graduating, so shut your damn mouth. The student then began to silently fume and mumbled about being humiliated like that by the class Dobe. Meanwhile, everyone was wondering what the Dobe did to graduate. Then Sasuke spoke up. So how did you graduate? He asked. All the fangirls started saying the same thing, not wanting to do anything without their precious Sasuke Kuen. Naruto looked at Sasuke and took a deep breath for dramatic effect. Everyone in the class listened intently to what Naruto had to say, for they too were curious about how Naruto graduated. It's a secret, Naruto said in a calm tone with a huge grin on his face as he saw the class's reaction to his statement. Everyone's faces faltered while some sweat dropped. Come on. Naruto, please tell us, the pink-haired one known as Sakura asked in a tone as sweet as sugar. Naruto turned to her and glared. No, Heruno. So do me a favor and shut the hell up. You're giving me a headache, Naruto told her. Everyone in the class, except Sasuke, who raised his eyebrow in a curious fashion, gasped at what Naruto had just told Sakura. They all knew that Naruto had never called Sakura anything but Sakura-chan because he had a crush on her, but based on what he just said, one thing came to the other students' minds. He doesn't like Sakura anymore, they all thought. Naruto then walked up to take a seat and saw there was one empty seat next to the Hyuga heiress, Hinata. He then went and took his seat next to her and noticed the quick glances she took at him and blushed when he caught her staring at him. Naruto sighed and then faced her. Hinata, look, I know you are taking those glances at me when you think I'm not looking because I know you like me, Naruto started. Hinata squeaked when she heard that Naruto knew about her no longer secret crush on the blonde Jinchuriki. Look, Hinata, the thing is that I don't like you in that way, Naruto said. Hinata's head then dropped when she heard this news, thinking she no longer had a chance to gain his love. But, he continued, Hinata looked up with hope in her eyes. There's a but, she thought. Maybe if we hung out more, my feelings for you could change from that of a friend to something more, he finished. Hinata then looked at Naruto and her face then became like that of a tomato, and then she fainted from the blood rush. Naruto luckily caught Hinata before she could fall, and then rested her down onto the desk so it would look like she was sleeping. Uruka then walked into the classroom 
and saw all of his students staring at Naruto. They must all be wondering how Naruto graduated, Iruka thought with a chuckle. All right, class, settle down, Iruka said. The class immediately stopped their conversations about how and why Naruto graduated. As you all know, you are now Jinin, and I will be calling the team members for each team. Each team will have three members, and will be trained by a Jonin sensei. Okay, I will now call out the team numbers and their members, Iruka said. All of Sasuke's fangirls thought the same thing, that Sasuke was going to be on their team. Iruka called the names of the first six teams and told them who their Jonin sensei was, and then came, Team 7 is Uzumaki Naruto, Haruno Sakura, and Uchiha Sasuke. Your Jonin sensei is Hataki Kakashi, Iruka called. Naruto immediately stood up to object as to why Sasuke and Sakura were on his team. Iruka told him it was because of the best-to-worst ratio, and that was that. Naruto then sat down and thought of pranks to try and torment Sasuke. Sakura then hit Naruto in the head while Sasuke just looked out the window. Team 8 is Hyuga Hinata, Aburame Shino, and Inazuka Kiba. Your sensei is Yuhi Kurinai, Iruka said. Kiba hooped with joy as his name was said while his dog, Akamaru, barked in approval. Hinata, who had now woken up from her fainting spell, was thinking about what Naruto had just told her, while Shino just remained silent. Now, Team 10 is Yamanaka Ino, Akimichi Chuji, and Nara Shikamaru. Your sensei is Saratobi Asuma. And that's all the teams. Please wait until your Jonin senseis arrive to pick you up, and before I leave, just one piece of advice. When on a mission, even one little mistake could cause disaster for your team and jeopardize the mission, so be careful out there, Iruka said with a smile and then left the classroom. Then all the Jonin senseis came to pick up their Jenin. Teams, all except for Team 7, who had been waiting for over three hours and counting. When is this guy going to come and pick us up? It's been over three hours. Sakura complained. Naruto and Sasuke just shrugged. But then Naruto got an idea. He looked around and found a stray bucket in the corner of the classroom. He went and picked it up and placed it above the door and secretly filled the inside of the bucket with chakra so it would add extra stickiness when it fell on their sensei's head. What are you doing, Naruto? Sakura asked. Just giving our sensei a little punishment for being late. Naruto replied with a foxy grin on his face. Dobe, our sensei is a jonin. He's not going to fall for such a pathetic prank, Sasuke said in a bored tone. Yeah, Naruto, Sasuke Kuin is right, Sakura said, wanting to back up her crush's words. However, Inner Sakura thought it was a great idea and began to chuckle evilly. Naruto scowled at them both and went to take his seat when he heard footsteps approaching the door. It opened, and the bucket fell on top of a mop of gravity defying silver hair. The jonin began to try to pry the bucket off his head while Naruto was laughing his ass off and bragging to Sasuke about how his prank had succeeded. Kakashi then finally pried off the bucket and glared at Naruto. That Gaki used chakra to stick the bucket to my head, Kakashi thought. His glare then changed to a smile as his visible eye changed into an upside down you. My first impression of you all is that, I hate you three, Kakashi said. The three jinin glared at him for disrespecting them. Well then, Meet me on the academy roof, so see ya. And he disappeared in a poof of smoke. The genin looked at each other, shrugged, and left for the roof. When they reached the roof, they found their jonin sensei waiting for them. Hey guys, about time you reached here, Kakashi said. The genin didn't answer, and just sat down on the little bench that just happened to be there. Kakashi then cleared his throat and took out a little book called Aika Aika Paradise. So why don't you all tell me about yourselves, you know, name, likes, dislikes, hobbies, favorite animal, and dreams for the future? Kakashi asked his three new disciples. Sakura spoke up. Sensei, why don't you go first? Sakura asked with a grin as she wanted to know about her mysterious one-eyed sensei. Kakashi sighed and put away his book. Okay, my name is Hataki Kakashi. My likes and dislikes are none of your business. My hobbies are a secret that no one should know about. My favorite animal is the dog, and my dreams are none of your business. Okay, your turn. Pinky, Kakashi finished with a smile. The three genin sweat dropped. All they learned was his name and favorite animal. My name is Haruno Sakura. I like, she took a glance at Sasuke and giggled with a slight blush on her face. I dislike Naruto and perverts. Naruto didn't say anything as Sakura continued her description. My hobbies are, she took another glance at Sasuke and giggled. And my dreams for the future are, she looked again at Sasuke, blushed a deep crimson, and giggled a bit louder than before. Kakashi sighed and shook his head at Sakura's antics. This girl is more interested in boys than in being a ninja. I'm going to have to snap her out of it soon, or their teamwork will suck.
Kakashi thought. Okay, you're next, chicken head, Kakashi said, pointing at Sasuke. Sasuke glared at Kakashi for insulting his hair. My name is Uchiha Sasuke. I like training in katanjutsus. I dislike fangirls and people who insult my hair. My hobbies are training. My favorite animal is the hawk, and my dream is more of an ambition. I wish to restore my clan and kill a certain man, Sasuke finished, the last part dripping with killing intent. Looks like he's too focused on achieving power to kill his brother. I need to show him the art of teamwork so he can become truly strong, Kakashi thought. Okay, you're next, blondie, Kakashi said, pointing at Naruto. Okay, my name is Uzumaki Naruto. I like training, learning new jutsus so I can add them to my repertoire of already amazing jutsus and ramen. I dislike Sakura in the three minutes it takes to cook ramen. My favorite animal is the fox, and my dreams for the future are to become the greatest Hokage so that people will finally see me for who I am instead of the burden that I carry, Naruto said with confidence. Kakashi smiled. I see a great future for this boy. All I have to do is bring up their teamwork, and they'll do fine as a genin team, he thought. Okay, guys, meet me at the bridge at training ground 7 tomorrow for your true genin test at 9 a.m., and don't eat breakfast, you'll barf. Kakashi then turned to leave when Sakura asked, but Sensei, I thought we were already genin. Why are we taking another test? Well, Sakura, the one at the academy was to test to see if you had the knowledge to be Jenin. This true Jenin test is to test your skills to see if you truly can be Jenin, Kakashi answered. Naruto, come with me, Kakashi added. Naruto raised his eyebrows. Why would their sensei want to talk to him? So he just ignored it and walked with the one-eyed Jonin. Hokage Tower, Saratobi's office. Knock knock, the Hokage raised his head when he heard the knock on his door. Come in he called. The door opened to reveal the blonde Jinchuriki and the perverted Sharingan user. Ah, uh, Naruto, Kakashi, good to see you, and Naruto, congratulations on passing and becoming a genin, Saratobi said with a grandfatherly smile. Naruto beamed and said thank you to the old Hokage. So, Gigi, what did you want to talk to me about? Naruto asked. Naruto, I wanted to talk to you about that night with Mizuki, the Hokage answered. Naruto nodded while Kakashi was getting very curious as to what was going on. Well, Naruto, on that night, you said you had an encounter with the QB when you were five. Care to explain how this came to be? Saratobi asked. Kakashi's eye widened. Naruto knows and encountered the QB. Now I'm really curious, he thought. Naruto nodded and proceeded to tell them the story. Well, Gigi, it started like this, Naruto started. Flashback. A young five-year-old Naruto was running from a mob of villagers, turning every which way in order to lose them, but wherever he went, they followed. Then he made a wrong turn and ended up at a dead-end alley. We've got you now, demon, said one of the people in the mob. What did I do? I didn't do anything to you. Naruto screamed. Shut up, demon spawn. We will kill you for your wrongdoings and for killing our friends and family, another person in the village said. Then Naruto felt pain everywhere as he was pummeled by fists and feet and stabbed by the occasional kanai. Then a voice appeared in Naruto's head. I can save you, Kit. Just tell me to make them go away and they will. Please make them go away. Please, I don't want to be hurt anymore, Naruto told the voice. Then a large blast of red chakra exploded out of Naruto, blowing away the villagers and knocking them out. Naruto then fainted from the strain of using that chakra and passed out. Saratobi appeared on the scene and took Naruto to the hospital to be healed. In Naruto's mindscape, Naruto was walking through a sewer-like complex, water splashing at his ankles with every step he took. Suddenly, a loud breathing sound was heard some distance away. Naruto followed it to find himself in a large room with a huge cage. There in the cage was a large red eye staring at Naruto. Come here, boy, the thing in the cage demanded. Naruto, not wanting to anger the thing, walked forward. Then large claws went through the bars and tried to skewer Naruto, but Naruto didn't react in any way. He just stood there, staring at the claws. The claws then retracted back inside the cage. I like you, Kit. So sense of fear when face to face with the mightiest of Bijou, Kyubi no Kitsune, which just happens to be me, Kyubi told Naruto. Naruto's eyes widened slightly. So you are the reason why the villagers hate me so much, but I can understand why they want to hurt me now, though they are idiots if they cannot see the difference between the jailer and the tenant, Naruto said. Kyubi laughed at Naruto as he was talking to himself. Hey Kit. The Kyubi interrupted Naruto's one-sided conversation. Naruto stopped talking and looked up at the fox. Yeah? Naruto responded. Well, Kit, this is your mind. 
So why not change the scenery a bit? I mean, sewer pipes are so dull. How do I do that? Naruto asked the 9,000-year-old demon. Just think about a place, for example, a meadow, and the place will change to that from a sewer to that of a meadow. So try it out, QB told Naruto with a large vulpine grin. Naruto then closed his eyes and thought of a meadow. Then a bright flash came out of nowhere. Naruto opened his eyes, and instead of the sewer, they were in a meadow with lush green grass, a small pond, a big blue sky, and a few trees here and there. Good job, kid. Naruto looked to his left and saw a large fox about the size of a horse. Kyubi, is that you? Naruto asked. Yes, yes it is, Kit, but you're probably wondering why I am so small, Kyubi said. Naruto nodded as to why the Kyubi was so small. Well, Kit, we demon foxes can change our size at will since we are master pranksters, Kyubi said with a grin. Anyway, Kit, I was wondering, do you want me to train you in the art of the Kitsunikin? Naruto looked wide-eyed at the fox. The all-powerful Kyubi wanted to train him, him of all people. Naruto grinned and nodded in approval. The fox smiled, and then a whirlwind of chakra formed around the fox. Then when the wind died down, there stood a man in about his mid-thirties with red hair, red eyes with black slits, wearing a white and gold kimono, for males, with silver flames on the bottom, and had two red furry fox ears peeking out of his red hair and nine fox tails swishing behind him. Kyubi, is that your human form? Naruto asked. Why yes, it is, Kit. You know, you're smarter than you look, Naruto, Kyubi said. Naruto smiled his foxy grin at the compliment Kyubi gave him. Now, Kit, prepare to feel like crap because we will start your training tomorrow. You will only stop to eat, or if you have to use the bathroom, understood? Kyubi asked slash said. Naruto nodded, agreeing to the terms Kyubi set for his training, not realizing his mistake, but it's too late now. In flashback, and that was how I met Kyubi, and how I am now a master of the Kitsunikan. Naruto finished as his flashback story ended. The Hokage and Kakashi stared wide-eyed at Naruto. This boy was training with the fox and could communicate with it. The Hokage smiled, for Naruto now had someone to talk to if he was lonely. Well, good for you, Naruto. You've made a new friend and now have a second sensei to train you, said the Hokage. Kakashi, on the other hand, thought otherwise. Naruto, how could you agree to train with the monster that nearly destroyed our village and cost the Yandame his life? Kakashi practically screamed. Naruto turned to Kakashi and glared hard at him. Three things, Kakashi. One, Kyubi didn't attack Kanoha intentionally. He told a man with eyes like a snake to use a brain-controlling jutsu on him and forced him to go and destroy Kanoha. Two, the Kyubi was the only one who took care of me in my times of need and trained me to defend myself, while you, Kakashi, would not even give a second thought to train me. And three, Kyubi acts more like a father to me than any other person in the world besides my real father, Naruto said his voice dripping with killer intent towards Kakashi. Kakashi looked down in shame. It was true, he would have never agreed to train Naruto until now, in the Kyubi, and he failed to protect Naruto when he was his unbu guardian, but then realized who the snake-eyed man was, and so did Sarutobi. It was Orochimaru, no doubt about it. I'm sorry, Naruto. I didn't know, and also, the man who probably took control of Kyubi was an S-class Kanoha missing nin known as Orochimaru, Kakashi said hoping the last part would back up his apology, and it succeeded. Apology accepted, senseis. Now then, can you tell me about what we are going to do for the test? Naruto asked excitedly. Kakashi sighed for being forgiven, but then began to chuckle when Naruto asked about the test. You'll find out tomorrow, Naruto. Have some patience, Kakashi said with an upside-down UI, noting that he was smiling. Naruto nodded, and then headed home to get some sleep. The next day, our blonde hero groggily got up from his bed and took a quick shower, then dressed himself in some new clothes he had never worn before, which he got for his birthday. It was a black t-shirt with a red shuriken on the back and the kanji for Uzumaki on the front, which Naruto wore over his vest. The vest is a weighted vest that is kind of like a bulletproof vest that cops wear. Instead, this one protects from kanai and shuriken, and some long blue pants, like the ones from Shippuden except in blue, which reached just below the ankles, and his now black ninja sandals which he got from the sandame. He ate a small breakfast of cup ramen and milk and then headed out the door. Oh shit, QB, I ate breakfast when Kakashi Sensei said not to. Now I'm gonna barf a whole lot. Naruto mentally said to his father figure. Don't worry, Kit. I've heard that Kakashi is always late. So that breakfast will do you some good. And well, I just want to thank you for sticking up for me yesterday. But do you really think of me as a father? QB said to Naruto. No problem, 
consider it a thank you for teaching me the Kitsunikin and those chakra control exercises. I'm gonna show that Uchiha team and Haruno bitch just what I can do. And yes, I do think of you as a father because you were there for me when I was hurt and comforted me whenever Sakura turned me down. So, Arigato, QB Tausen, Naruto said. Oh, come on, Kit, don't do that. You're making me tear up, Sob. It's just so nice to hear somebody say that to me. Well then, I will protect you with my entire being, Naruto Kit. Now, hurry up, it's almost nine. You're going to be late for your test. Naruto then cut off his connection to QB and sped off towards training ground 7 for the test. When Naruto arrived at the training grounds, he found a brooding Sasuke ignoring a Sakura trying to ask him out on a date. Naruto chuckled at the sight and then greeted his teammates. Hey, Sasuke team, Haruno-san, Naruto said as he greeted them. Dobe, and it's about time you changed your clothes and developed some fashion sense, Sasuke greeted Naruto and continued to brood. Naruto just smiled and didn't say anything to counter Sasuke's insult. Hey, Naruto, I was just wondering, why aren't you calling me Sakura-chan anymore? Sakura greeted, but was sad when Naruto didn't call her Sakura-chan like he used to. Wait, why am I sad? This just gives me more time to try and swoon Sasuke, she thought. Because, Haruno-san, you have lost my respect, and so you must earn it back by becoming stronger if you were to get me to call you Sakura-chan again, Naruto said. Well then, Naruto, I'll do my best to earn it back, Sakura said, accepting this little challenge. Two hours later, Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura were lying down on the ground looking up at the clouds, and well, Sasuke and Sakura were starving, but notice Naruto didn't look the least bit famished. Hey, Dobe, how come you don't look hungry? Sasuke asked. Well, team, it's because I ate breakfast. I heard how that Kakashi sensei is known to be late all the time, so I ate breakfast, Naruto said with a tone of confidence. Sasuke and Sakura scowled when they heard this and continued to stare at the clouds. Poof. Then a puff of smoke appeared out of nowhere, and there stood Kakashi. You're late. Sakura screamed. Well, I got lost on the road of life, Kakashi explained. Liar. Naruto screamed. Kakashi ignored them and then took out two bells from his weapons pouch. Your test is to try and steal these bells from me by noon, or else you guys will get to watch me eat the lunches I brought for you guys if you succeed. The genin now realized why he told them not to eat breakfast. It was for torturous purposes. So if you want to succeed, come at me with the intent to kill. Your test starts now. Kakashi yelled. Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura then jumped into the brush to hide from their sensei. Kakashi, although he could easily sense them, knew they were taught well by Iruka, especially Naruto because since he got practice from his pranks, his stealth skills were by far the most impressive. Kakashi would never have been able to sense him if he hadn't learned about chakra detection. With Naruto, Naruto was moving silently through the bushes to Sakura's location because he knew the true purpose of this test was to build teamwork, and Sakura was the closest one to him. He then reached Sakura and gently touched her shoulder. Sakura whipped around to scream, but Naruto, expecting that, put his hand over her mouth to stop her from screaming. Listen, Haruno, the true purpose of this test is to use teamwork to get those bells. Naruto whispered to her as he released his hand from her mouth. How do you know this? She asked. Naruto sighed. Use your common sense, Haruno. How else could we beat a Jonin because individually we are weak against him? But if together we could be a match for him and might get the bells. And if we succeed, I'll call you Sakura-san from now on. Naruto said as though it were the most obvious thing in the entire universe. Sakura blushed in embarrassment because she never had thought of that. And she would feel better if Naruto would start addressing her by her first name. She nodded but realized a flaw in this. How are we going to get Sasuke Kuin to join us in this though? Sakura asked. Naruto grinned. Leave that to me, he said in a confident tone, and the both of them then headed off to find Sasuke. Meanwhile, Sasuke was stuck up to his neck in dirt with an angry expression on his face at being humiliatingly defeated by Kakashi Sensei. Then he saw Naruto and Sakura walking towards him, laughing at his predicament. The great and mighty Uchiha Sasuke has been defeated, Naruto said while laughing. Sasuke just glared, focusing his killer intent on Naruto. Come on, Sasuke, I'll get you out, but only if you agree to work with me and Sakura as a team to beat Kakashi Sensei and get those bells, Naruto said. Sasuke declined, not wanting to give up on his Uchiha pride. Naruto groaned in annoyance and then slammed his hand down on the ground. He then pumped Chakra into the ground, breaking down the ground's hold on Sasuke. Naruto grabbed Sasuke by the collar and hoisted him up. Listen here, team, the only way we could beat Kakashi-sensei is if we work as a team. 
You know what happens if you do it alone. You end up stuck in the ground like a loser and feel like a baka. So swallow your damn pride and help us, Naruto yelled at Sasuke. Sasuke remained silent. Naruto sighed and let go of Sasuke's collar, reuniting him with the ground. Come on, Sakura. Obviously Sasuke doesn't want to become a true genin, Naruto said and began to leave. Sakura didn't want to leave Sasuke Kuin, but she knew Naruto was right, so she left with Naruto. Wait, Sasuke called to them. Naruto and Sakura smiled at each other. All according to plan, I'll work with you guys. So, what's the plan, Dobe? Sasuke asked Naruto. Naruto grinned. Oh, he had a plan all right. Back with Kakashi. Looks like they realized the true purpose of this exam, Kakashi thought with a smile. Then a flurry of kanai and shuriken flew towards him. Kakashi jumped up and avoided them, but then saw Naruto flying towards him and blocked a kick from him. Kakashi then grabbed Naruto by the ankles and spun, using the momentum to slam Naruto into the ground. Kakashi got up from the ground and saw Naruto disappear in a poof of smoke. Cage Bunshin. He probably learned that from the scroll. Kakashi then snapped out of the thought when he saw a rather large katan. Gukake Uno Jutsu, courtesy of Sasuke, speeding towards him. Kakashi jumped to the side to avoid being burnt, but then he barely managed to avoid Sakura who had made a grab for the bells. Phew, that was close, Kakashi thought. But then he saw he was surrounded by five Naruto clones each one doing a long set of hand seals. The clones then finished their hand seals and shouted the name of their jutsus. Katon, Kariwenda no Hutsu. Suiton, Suiryuda no Hutsu. Doton, Doriwenda no Hutsu. Raiton, Rairyuda no Hutsu. Futon, Furiwenda no Hutsu. The five dragons of fire, lightning, earth, and wind were blown out of four of the clones' mouths except for the water dragon which came from the nearby river. Kakashi's eyes widened at how Naruto was able to perform these high-level ninjutsu and jumped before he could be hit with a barrage of the elemental dragons. But it was too late to avoid being punched in the face by Sasuke, Sakura, and Naruto. He looked up and saw three fists come crashing down on his face as he made his descent to the ground. The last thing he heard was the ringing of the clock he had set for noon and the jingling of bells before being claimed by darkness. One hour later, Kakashi woke up to see the three genin smiling up at him. Kakashi tried to move but saw he was tied to the post with rope and his fingers were tied with ninja wire to prevent him from doing hand signs for the escape jutsu. Kakashi smiled. Oh yeah, this was going to be a team for the books? Okay, guys, can you untie me because you pass, not only because you got the bells, but because you showed high levels of skill and teamwork? Naruto, I was wondering where did you learn those jutsus? Kakashi asked. Sasuke and Sakura were wondering the same thing because those jutsu Naruto used were obviously very high level, probably jonin level. Naruto sighed, not wanting to keep secrets from his team. He told them the story about how Mizuki had betrayed the village by stealing the forbidden scroll which Naruto had originally stolen because he was tricked by Mizuki. But before Mizuki arrived, Naruto had learned the five elemental dragon jutsus and cage bunsha. He also mentioned how Mizuki told him and Iruka his plot, not mentioning the part about QB, though and how he, Naruto, got really mad and used the jutsus to kill Mizuki. He also mentioned how he was traumatized by the incident for a few days because he had made his first kill. The three of them were in shock at Naruto's story and knew by the tone that he wasn't lying. Hey, Naruto, could you, Sasuke said, maybe teach me the Karawindan and Cage Bunshin? Yeah, Naruto, I want to learn the Cage Bunshin too, Sakura chimed in. Now it was Naruto's turn to be in shock because he never thought Sakura and, most of all, Sasuke to ask him for help. Kakashi smiled. Just so you know they untied Kakashi during Naruto's little story, knowing they would get along fine. Sure, guys, I would be glad to, but you're going to need to build up your chakra reserves to use them. The reason I can do these jutsu is that I have a bloodline on my mother's side that gives me a larger chakra reserve than normal ninja at birth, Naruto told them. And no, Kakashi, this is not a joke. Gigi Hokage told me about my mother when he asked me about the Mizuki incident after you had left. Naruto added, leaving Kakashi shell-shocked. M. Kakashi-sensei? Sakura called. Yes, Sakura? Kakashi answered. About my dreams for the future, I changed it to wanting to be a strong kunoichi in the future. Kakashi smiled. That's good to know, Sakura. It really is, Kakashi said. Okay, guys, tomorrow I'll teach you all an exercise that will build up your chakra reserves, but for now, go and have some fun and get some rest because tomorrow you'll be doing missions as an official genin team. Kakashi told them. 
The three Jinnin nodded and left to go home with happy expressions on their faces because not only were they official ninja, but they had also made friends with each other to help each other get stronger and to help accomplish their dreams. It was about two months after Team 7 was made an official Jinnin team with their sensei Hataki Kakashi, who has been said to have never passed a Jinnin team until two months ago. The team was doing extraordinarily well, doing over 210 D-rank missions. As for the team members, well, let's just say they got super extraordinarily awesome. Uzumaki Naruto, our favorite blonde Jinchuriki, had revealed his true self to be a not as loud, mature, strong, and intelligent Naruto. He had grown exceptionally stronger and had almost mastered the water walking exercise as he already knew the tree climbing one. He learned more jutsus from Kakashi and Kyuubi. He began weight training, wearing up to 200 kilos now, and due to this, became faster and stronger in order to use the Kitsuniken to its full potential. The Kitsuniken required the art of using fast-paced moves and agility, which are used to get under the enemy's guard and then deliver a set of powerful blows to defeat them. Overall, Naruto was a badass. Yuchiha Sasuke had learned some more fire-style jutsus from his family scrolls, such as Katon. Ryuka no Jutsu and Katon. Hausenka no Jutsu and Katon. Karawinden no Jutsu from Naruto after doing continuous work on the tree climbing exercise. He also learned a fighting style that he got from a scroll given to him by Kakashi called Wrath of the Dragon, which uses powerful and speedy blows that are pounded on by the foe but lower your guard and are therefore very risky to use in a Taijutsu battle. He and Sakura also, after continuous use of the tree climbing exercise, finally got enough chakra to learn Cage Bunshin no Jutsu from Naruto. Haruno Sakura also improved, learning a variety of Jinjutsu from a young Kuranai sensei and inventing her own fighting style called Zibon Sakura, I do not own bleach. In this style, Sakura casts a powerful Jinjutsu that makes the scenery change to that of a forest of Sakura blossom trees. Then after that, she takes numerous kanai knives and throws them all at her confused opponent, thus killing them. Now the team had just returned after capturing the most horrible, deadly, and ferocious monster-like animal in the entire animal kingdom. It was Tora the cat. The team delivered the cat to the place where they get their missions with anger towards the cat for it had nearly sliced off Naruto's face, clawed out Sasuke's eyes, ripped Kakashi's little orange book to shreds, and ruined Sakura's hairdo. They grinned evilly at the cat, not showing any sign of pity when it was nearly squashed to death by its owner, the daimyo's wife. Good job, Team 7, that was your 211th mission completion for the year. Now then, your next mission is to cut the lawn of Dash. No. All eyes turned towards the blonde Jinchuriki, who looked at the Hokage, directing all his killing intent towards the Sandame, who, if not trained in the art of repelling killer intent, would have panicked. With all due respect, Gigi, we should be doing missions that would be able to help with our skills as ninja, not ones that are chores that a civilian could do for themselves, Naruto said with an intelligent tone. Iruka stared at Naruto wide-eyed as he had never heard or seen Naruto act mature in his life, while the Sandame chuckled. All right, Naruto, you've made your point. Here's a C-rank. It's an escort mission, he said, tossing a scroll at Naruto, who caught it with a happy expression. Your client is outside. You can come in now, the Sandame said to the door. The door slid open, and there stood a rather fat man wearing regular civilian garb, holding a sake bottle. Due to Naruto's enhanced senses due to the QB, he smelled that horrid stench that was the breath of a drunken man. Naruto waved his hand in front of his nose. Hey, old man, ever heard of breath mints? They're really quite handy for people with horrendous and disgusting breath, Naruto said, trying not to vomit his lunch of rice, chicken, and a salad. I'm having Naruto change his diet to something other than ramen. Shut up, Gaki. I'm the super bridge builder, Tazuna. I want you to treat me with respect. Besides, you guys are just a bunch of brats, especially you, Blondie. You look like you couldn't even lift a kanai, Tazuna said with a tone of arrogance. I'm a jonin, Kakashi said, but failed to notice when Naruto suddenly blurred away and slammed Tazuna into a wall with a kanai to his throat. Everyone in the room looked at Naruto with surprise. They had never seen Naruto move with such speed, not even during the spars between Naruto and Sasuke in training sessions. This made Sasuke mad, for Naruto was holding back in their spars. The dobe's been holding out on me, Sasuke thought with gritted teeth. Care to repeat that little remark of not lifting a kanai, Mr. Tazuna? Naruto said in a tone of malice. Tazuna looked at Naruto with a look that said, No, no never again, just please don't kill me. Naruto grinned his foxy grin and let Tazuna go, pocketing the kanai in his weapon's pouch. Kakashi then got over his surprise and said, Alrighty then, team, 
We'll meet with Tazuna at the south gate at tomorrow noon, and poofed away. The Jenin and Tazuna then went to their homes to pack up for tomorrow's trip. Time skip, tomorrow noon, south gate. The team and Tazuna were there waiting impatiently for Kakashi to arrive when a poof of smoke was heard. The four turned their heads and saw the Jonin with surprised looks on their faces. You're early, Naruto said with disbelief, even pinching himself to see if it was a dream. I'm never late for missions, Naruto, because those are important, Kakashi said. The three Jenin then got over their shock and left the village. Later on in their journey, Naruto spied a puddle on the side of the road. That's strange. QB Towson, did it rain yesterday? Naruto thought to QB. Not that I know of Kit, then it must be a trap, trap. The boy and fox thought. Sensei, Naruto called to the silver haired man. I know, Naruto, Kakashi replied instantly. Naruto nodded and silently prepared himself for battle while Sakura asked about the community of Wave Country and why they don't have ninja. Then two men in shinobi garb with huge clawed gauntlets on their arms and the Hitai 8 with the symbol of Kirigakure with a slash through the symbol. The chains, which suddenly sprang from the gauntlets, wrapped around Kakashi and then ripped him to shreds. Chachi PT. One down, for to go, the former Mist Ninja said, and then went for Tazuna. Naruto rushed at them, using his speed to jump and deliver a spin kick to the man's face, making him groan in pain. Taking advantage of the opportunity, Naruto landed on the ground and delivered a sharp uppercut, sending him upwards, where Naruto used an axe kick on the man's face, knocking him out cold. Sasuke had already knocked out the other guy. Good job, guys, Kakashi said, appearing out of nowhere as he proceeded to tie up the villains. Sensei, when did you use the Kawarimi? Sakura asked. Kakashi's eye went into an upside-down U-shape, indicating he was smiling. Bright as ever, Sakura. How did you know? The Jonin asked his disciple. Well, first of all, Sensei, I'm smart. And because there's a set of chopped wood on the ground where you were, Sakura said blandly. Kakashi chuckled nervously at the obvious use of a Kawarimi. Well, Mr. Tazuna, I'm going to need to have a few words with you, Kakashi said to Tazuna. The bridge builder sighed, and then told the team the whole story about Gatu, and how the village was poor now, and could only afford a sea rank. Well, guys, we now have a few enemy ninja we might face up ahead. So should we stay or go? The Cyclops asked his team. Stay, Sasuke said. Those two were weak. I'm sure we could handle the other more powerful guys. So it's a stay, Naruto said with confidence. Not wanting to let down her teammates, and also not wanting to look weak, Sakura also said, stay. All right, then let's go, Kakashi said. A few hours later, the team and Tazuna made it to the port and were on a small boat leading to wave country. Then the three Jenin saw a large shadow on their left through the mist. It was the bridge that Tazuna was building. The Jenin stared in awe at its massive size and length. Tazuna grinned at the expressions on the youth's faces. They then reached the shore and continued trekking toward Tazuna's house. Then Naruto heard something in the brush and threw a kanai into it. The others were surprised at his throw and wondered why he did it. Naruto went into the brush and came out with his kanai and a dead white rabbit. Naruto, you killed a poor, innocent little rabbit, Sakura said in anger. Then Naruto caught the punch directed at his skull and held up the rabbit to Sakura's face. Sakura, look, this rabbit has white fur, meaning it was kept in a cage for a long while, and besides, it's the middle of summer. Rabbits change their fur white during winter, Naruto said with intelligence that nobody would be able to get over, hidden. Naruto's right, Sasuke said. Then Kakashi yelled, duck. Everyone dove to the ground, avoiding a large sword that spun as it flew where their heads were seconds ago. The sword stuck in the tree with a twack, and a tan-skinned man wearing no shirt, showing muscles, camouflage pants, brown hair, and bandages wrapped around his face appeared. Hello, Momochi Zabuza, aka Demon of the Mist. Guys, protect Tazuna, Kakashi said with seriousness, raising his Hitai 8, showing that underneath it was a blood-red eye with three black tomo in it, the Sharingan. The three genin looked with surprise at the amount of killing intent in the air and by Kakashi's other eye. Suddenly, an eerie mist appeared from the air. Kirigakure no Yatsu. Ah, Sharingan no Kakashi, it's an honor to fight you, the ex Kirinin said. Then Zabuza jumped off the branch, sword in hand, and slashed at Kakashi, who blocked it with just a kanai. Then the Zabuza in front of Kakashi fell and became water, but it was too slow to react to the swing of Zabuza's sword as it cut him in half. Kakashi sensei! The three genin yelled in fear as their teacher was just sliced in half. They formed a triangle defense to protect Tazuna. 
Then what seemed to be blood turned to water as it fell as a puddle on the ground. Zabuza, still with shock on his face, felt cold metal on his jugular. Zabuza chuckled, very impressive, Kakashi, copying my Mizu Bunshin no Jutsu in this thick mist. Very good, but not good enough. Zabuza yelled the last part as he fell to a puddle, indicating that he was a Mizu Bunshin. Then Kakashi felt a presence behind him and ducked as Zabuza barely missed his hair. Using the momentum from his swing, Zabuza dug his sword into the ground and kicked Kakashi in his stomach, sending the Kapinin flying into a nearby lake. Zabuza then shunshined and performed a set of hand signs. Suru no Jutsu, the eyebrowless ninja yelled, and Kakashi was instantly encased in a sphere of water. Ha ha ha, now to deal with the little brats, Zabuza said as he made a Mizu Bunshin. Guys run, you don't stand a chance against him. He's out of your league. Finish the mission, Kakashi yelled. Never. Sasuke rushed forward, making hand signs for a fire jutsu. No, Sasuke-kun. Sakura yelled, but it was too late. Sasuke was elbowed in his stomach hard and was sent skidding along the ground, blood coming from his mouth, a sign of internal bleeding. Naruto calculated a plan and grinned his large foxy grin. Hey you, the freak with no eyebrows. Naruto called to the Mizu Bunshin, which growled in anger at the blonde. Prepare to be the first jonin to be beaten by Jinin. Naruto looked at his teammates and nodded to them. Sasuke and Sakura nodded back, somehow knowing the exact steps of Naruto's plan. Sakura rushed forward with chakra enhanced speed and formed the hand signs for her Jinjutsu. The Zabuza clone then saw everything turn into a pretty cherry blossom tree field. Knowing it was a Jinjutsu, the clone tried to dispel it, but it wouldn't work. As it tried a second attempt, it then slashed from all sides and then fell to a puddle of water and there stood seven Sakuras, each with two kanai, smiling at their handiwork as they dispelled the Jinjutsu. Meanwhile, Sasuke and Naruto, after seeing Sakura take down the Mizu Bunshin, rushed the original Zabuza. Sasuke launched a Gukaku no Jutsu at the Nukunin, but Zabuza made a Mizu Bunshin and let it take the blow as it was evaporated. Then, out of the steam, a blonde boy wearing a black shirt with the Uzumaki spiral emblem and khaki shorts came running through the mist with 20 cage Bunshins. The clones then lunged at Zabuza, Kanai in hand. Zabuza was then forced to release Kakashi as he could never avoid that many clones and come out unscathed. With the water prison broken, Naruto and Kakashi then began flinging Kanai at the Exkiri ninja. Using the water walking technique, Naruto, Kakashi, and Zabuza stood facing each other in a circular motion. Then Naruto, Kakashi, and Zabuza began to form hand signs in perfect sync and speed. Suten, Suryuenden, and Ojutsu the three ninja yelled. Then, three huge water dragons rose from the depths of the lake and attacked. Kakashi and Naruto's dragons together quickly dispatched Zabuza's own and then headed straight for Zabuza. The sword-wielding jonin managed to avoid one of the dragons, but was then hit with another one in his face. Zabuza then got up and began another long chain of hand signs which Kakashi copied perfectly while mocking Zabuza by completing his own sentences. However, Zabuza was taken aback by the monkey sea. Monkey Do act that he stopped making signs, but Kakashi kept going. Sweet un, Daibakufu no Jutsu, yelled the Kapinin. Then a giant explosion of water erupted from the lake, flooding the land and nearly catching Sasuke, Sakura, and Tizuna if they hadn't climbed the trees. Zabuza was hit really hard with that blow and smashed into a tree. Itai itai itai, Zabuza said to himself, then screamed in pain as a couple of kanai were lodged into his arms and legs rendering them useless courtesy of Kakashi. Can you see the future? Zabuza asked with pain and surprise. Yes, and yours is death, Kakashi said, and was about to throw a kanai when two Simban needles came out of the brush and struck Zabuza at pressure points in his neck, killing him. A masked person then appeared in a swirl of wind. The person looked about 14 or 15 and yet easily picked up the body of Zabuza. Arigatu, we've been searching for this man for years now. I must go to destroy this body the masked person said. Wait, are you a hunter Neen? Naruto asked. Yes, I am, answered the person. Well, aren't you supposed to just burn the body or something right then and there, not take it someplace and then dispose of it? Naruto asked. The hunter Neen, although he didn't show it, was surprised by the boy's information and therefore left in a hurry with a swirl of wind. Well, guys, let's go, Kakashi said, but then fell unconscious. Sakura ran up to their sensei and checked him over. Nothing serious, guys, just some chakra depletion. He'll be fine, Sakura said. Tazuna and the Jin inside. 
You know, Sakura-chan, you should be a medic nin. You look like you could be a very accomplished one at that, Naruto said. Really? Naruto? You think I, wait, did you just call me Sakura-chan? Sakura asked the blonde Jinchuriki. Yes, I did, Sakura-chan. Because of this battle, you have earned back my respect, Naruto said with a grin. Naruto then picked up the unconscious copycat ninja and let Tazuna lead the way to his house. Kakashi woke up to find himself in a regular room on a futon. Naruto then came into the room and called to his teammates. Hey guys, Kakashi sensei's awake. Naruto yelled down the stairs. Sasuke and Sakura then ran up and saw their sensei sitting up in his futon, looking a lot better but still exhausted from his fight with Zabuza. Hey Naruto, Sasuke, and Sakura, Kakashi said in his lazy tone. Sensei, glad to see you're all right. Right after you fainted, Naruto and Sasuke carried you all the way to Mr. Tazuna's house, Sakura said. Hey guys, I don't want to be the bringer of bad news, but Kakashi started. Zabuza's is still alive, Naruto finished. You yeah, what he said, Kakashi said. Sakura and Sasuke looked at him like he had just grown a second head. What do you mean he's still alive? Sakura yelled, making all the guys cover their ears to prevent deafness. I mean, we all saw him get killed by that hunter Nin, right? Unfortunately, that was a fake one, Kakashi told her. However, the damage Naruto and I did to him should take him out of commission for at least a week. Good work protecting Tazuna, guys, especially you Naruto. You've improved a lot, Kakashi said with a mask-covered grin. Sasuke scowled because he barely got any praise and began envying Naruto. Arigato, Kakashi-sensei, Naruto said with his foxy grin. So now, during this week, we'll be doing some training in order to get ready for our rematch with Zabuza, Kakashi said, his tone full of seriousness. The three genin nodded in agreement. But first, I'm hungry. Where's the food? Can't teach on an empty stomach, you know? The genin then sweat dropped at their sensei's antics, but realized he did have a point. Sasuke and Naruto then helped Kakashi up and carried him downstairs to meet Tazuna's daughter, Tsunami, and her son, Inari. Kakashi ate his lunch of rice and vegetables and then, using the crutches the Tazuna family supplied him with, left with the genin to go train them. In a random forest near the Tazuna household, Kakashi led the two genin to a nearby pond, which just happened to be there. Sasuke tripped on a pebble and fell into the pond. Sakura rushed over to help him while inner Sakura was laughing her ass off. Kakashi was laughing too. Sasuke Kuen, are you alright? Are you hurt? Sakura asked with concern. I'm fine, Sakura, Sasuke answered and then got up out of the pond and stood next to a tree, soaking wet and brooding while Sakura looked at him with concerned eyes. Kakashi then stopped laughing and explained the water walking. Okay, guys, to do the water walking, you must first channel chakra into your feet like the tree walking you learned back in Kanoha. But in order to keep yourself on the water, you must keep expelling chakra from your feet at a constant pace, Kakashi explained. Hi, Kakashi-sensei, the two genin said, and then proceeded to do it. Sakura managed to get it on her fifth try since she had better control. Sasuke got it much, much later since he had more chakra to control and got it on his 100th try. Kakashi then told them to keep practicing while he would go off to check on Naruto. What training is Naruto going through, Kakashi? Sasuke asked curious about his blonde teammate. Yeah, what is Naruto doing? Sakura asked. Kakashi sighed. It's a secret. So sorry, Kakashi said, and then leapt away to find Naruto. With Naruto. Naruto was having a spar with one of his shadow clones. The clone tried a sweep kick, but Naruto jumped it and attempted a punch to the clone's head. The clone ducked and tried to kick Naruto's chin, the kick that starts the primary lotus. But Naruto leaned back, dodging it, rolled back, and got into the Kitsunikan stance. Naruto grinned, and then rushed the clone. The clone, expecting a straightforward attack, got ready to block slash dodge it, but Naruto jumped, surprising the clone, and hit the clone in the head with an axe kick, thus dispelling it. Naruto then wiped his face at a nearby river, took a long drink, and turned around to see Kakashi clapping his hands and wearing a smirk. Nice show, Naruto. Impressive moves you showed me, Kakashi said. Naruto grinned, and then sat down in a cross-legged position. Thanks, sensei. So if you don't mind, I need to do some training with the furball, Naruto said, and then smirked when he heard QB growl angrily in his mind at the insult. Sure. Oh, and here, this is a jutsu scroll. Futon, de tapa, wind style. Great breakthrough, suite on. Sewage and hiki, water style. Water wall jutsu. Mizabunshin no jutsu. Water clone jutsu. Keizbushin no jutsu. Wind clone jutsu. Kageshuriken Bunshin no Jutsu, 
Shadow Shuriken Clone Jutsu, and Cage Bunshin Daibakuha, Exploding Shadow Clones, Kakashi said, tossing Naruto a small scroll. This jutsu summons a large gust of wind that could blow down a few oak trees at max power, Kakashi added. Naruto thanked Kakashi and then went into his mindscape to train with QB. Kakashi then smiled at his sensei's son. This boy is destined for greatness, may even be better than his father one day, he thought, and then jumped to trees to return to Sasuke and Sakura, but didn't notice the shocked faces of a pink-haired and a black-haired genin that were racing back to the pond. Sasuke was also extremely jealous that Naruto got to learn all those amazing and powerful jutsus. Naruto training with the Kyuubi, I don't understand, Sakura thought as she and Sasuke made it to the pond, but was snapped out of her thoughts when she saw Kakashi with an angry face. Guys, why did you disobey my orders? I specifically told you to stay here and train in water walking. Just because you can do it doesn't mean you've mastered it, Kakashi yelled. The two jinin flinched at the jonin's words and then suddenly found the dirt to be very interesting. Sasuke then found the courage to answer. Well, sensei, we were curious about Naruto's special training and followed you, Sasuke said, his Uchiha pride preventing him from being scared and looking like he wet his pants, which Sakura just happened to be acting like right now. Kakashi sighed and then glared at his students. How much did you hear? He asked the two. We heard the part with Naruto's training with the Kyuubi. I don't understand, sensei. The Kyuubi is dead, isn't it? Sakura asked, somehow managing to speak. Kakashi looked down again and sighed again. That is something Naruto himself will tell you when he thinks you too will be ready to deal with the news. He will eventually tell you, Kakashi answered, and then told them to go back to the Tazuna household while he went to get Naruto. With Naruto, Naruto was sleeping on the trunk of a tree. His new black t-shirt with the Uzumaki spiral on it, and his khaki shorts were covered with grass stains, and his face, hands, and legs were covered with dirt. Then a young girl wearing a pink kimono was walking through the forest with a basket full of herbs. The girl spotted Naruto and went up to the sleeping Jinchuriki, pulling out a kanai. That's because this was no ordinary girl, a slash in. I'm making Haku female in this so I'm leaving it at she. This was the fake Hunterneen Haku. Should I kill him now and end the trouble because we will fight soon? On second thought, I will want to see more of his skills, so I will have to kill him on the field of battle. Haku thought, and then put back the kanai into the hidden pocket of her kimono, and then woke up our blonde hero. Naruto stirred and then whipped out a kanai, thinking it was an enemy. Naruto, now fully awake, saw a pretty girl wearing a pink kimono with a basket of herbs. Herbs used for healing, he realized. Naruto stashed his kanai and stood up, dusting off his pants. Those herbs are used for healing. Do you have a sick friend? Naruto asked the girl. Why yes I do, um, Haku didn't finish. Oh, my bad. Where are my manners? My name is Uzumaki Naruto, the next Hokage, and you are? My name is Haku, and if you are dreaming to become Hokage, then you really are dreaming big, Haku said with a smile. Well, I don't care. Once I make a promise to myself or someone, I never give up until I fulfill it, Naruto said with confidence and determination. Haku nodded, and then asked Naruto an unexpected question. Do you have anyone precious to you, your precious people? Naruto looked stunned, and then thought, people precious to me. Iruka, Sakura, Sasuke, Kakashi-sensei, Gigi Hokage, and the other rookies Naruto thought. Yeah, I have a lot of people whom I hold precious to me, Naruto said with his foxy grin plastered on his face. Haku smiled and then got up, having collected all the necessary herbs. Well, I have to go, Uzumaki. I hope we meet again someday, Haku said and then walked off. Me too, Hunter-san, he said whispering the last part. Haku then froze and watched Naruto's retreating back. He knew, she thought, and then ran off to the hideout she and Zabuza were using. Kakashi then arrived and found Naruto, looking exhausted walking back to Tazuna's house. It was getting dark, so Kakashi then grabbed Naruto under his arm and sped off towards the house. Naruto, Sakura, and Sasuke followed me and heard our little conversation about your training with Kyuubi, and they're starting to question me. You're going to have to tell them soon, Kakashi said. Naruto looked at his sensei with surprise and then changed to a downcast look. Naruto sighed and looked up at the silver moon. This day came sooner than I expected. I'll tell them after the mission. Well, QB Towson looks like my secret is gonna have to be revealed. Don't worry, Kit. They'll accept. You. I just know it. So don't worry yourself and Naruto. I am very proud to call you my Kit. Naruto smiled and then went straight to bed when he and Kakashi arrived at Tazuna's house. Thank you for watching. If you liked our video, please hit the like button.
subscribe for updates, and follow our Twitter, info in description. Credits go to the story's author, with details below. Don't miss out on our other content, click on the suggested video for more stories and adventures. We appreciate your support and look forward to seeing you in our next video.